Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Aptekar Aslam of Yieldworks, going to talk today about challenges in testing photonics. Aptekar, as we get more data, as we get more density in these designs, everybody's now looking to photonics as a way of moving a lot more data with less power and also less heat. But that also raises some challenges in terms of how are you actually going to make sure that these things are going to work reliably over their lifetime and in the short term as well? So what sort of challenges are you encountering as you start testing these things? The challenges are there's no standards per se on how optical devices get tested in conjunction with silicon and the amount of data that's going to get generated. Um, the cross analysis to say, hey, but this electrical parameters uh, what are the optical parameters that we're measuring and how the, like for example, in a core package part, how do we actually generate that data, how we collect that data and how we analyze that data, uh, some of the complexities that we're seeing in the industry. Some of them relate to non-standards, some of them relate to the current tools that exist out there are also not able to handle the, either the volumes of data, types of data, and then perform the analysis as well. Let's take a closer look. Let's do that. Atkar, what are we looking at? So what we're looking at over here, Ed, is you know typical you know, your standard silicon testing, right? Your standard chips where you have your device in the test, whether that's on wafer form, uh, whether it's in package form. You basically, in this case, this example over here is showing it's on a wafer form, and you have your probe card, and your probe card is basically touching down on these pins over here, supplying the appropriate voltages, currents, frequencies, wherever the input parameters are. And basically, we are collecting the output of those uh, tests. And that typically you know, can be either collected in a you know, the STDF file. They can be collected in CSV files or JSON files, wherever those different formats are. And the industry is pretty, you know, I would say mature in the sense, hey, what are the, uh, the types of tests that you're going to do on a silicon-based device? Uh, how are you collecting the data on tests like Terra? Dyn, Advantes, uh, to name a few. You know, it's a pretty standard methodology of testing. Now, what we're looking over here on the right is now you have photonics devices. Some of these photonics devices can be singulated photonics device, meaning you only have photonics device on the wafer. In some cases, you have a combination of silicon product as well as your photonics product on, on the actual chip, right? And these cases, um, for example, if we take into account photonics devices that go into AI chips or go into GPU types of chips, right? Then you're talking about optical ports, right? So over here, you see optical ports. And in these optical, optical ports, you basically are um, transmitting and, and you're receiving uh, light signals, you're receiving measuring light signals, you're transmitting light signals, but you're also measuring light signals as well. Different wavelengths um, called lambda, some other bias parameters being uh, collected as well. And at the same time, you're varying those by using electrical electrical inputs, right? So it's a mix of now electrical data and light data. And then what you're collecting on the over here is you're collecting both the digital data and now you're collecting optical data, which optical data is, you know, the new stuff that didn't exist before. It sounds as if you're mixing apples and oranges here, right? I mean, this is not the way things typically go together. What sort of problems does that cause? The types of problem it causes is you basically have the, I would say, the SDDF data, right? That's just using that as an example, right? That basically goes off and records the data for every chip. Um, and it has a whole bunch of slew of test results over here. But remember, there is no good way of inserting optical data into the SDF file, right? So typically what customers do that we've seen is they go off and generate a CSV files. And in there, there's a complexity of now you're going from an X and a Y to what we call almost like a sub sub device structure, right? Um, and the sub device structure, in this case, it's basically ports, right? So you can have as many optical ports as you want. Let's say I, I go from one to 10. Right, and for each one of these optical ports, and now you're basically transmitting certain data and you're receiving certain data, and you're doing this continuously. So it's almost like you know a sweep data, or what we refer to as multiple parametric reads per input. 
right? So the complexity then becomes, how do I take this data over here, which is now being collected at a sub-device level, marry it to an X and Y, and then marry it basically back to my electrical test that was recorded in the SDF file in the first place. Now, other complexities are, hey, okay, am I going to go off and retest die, reprobe die? What happens if I reprobe die? They're electrically tested, but not tested optically. Difficulty would be, hey, I'm retesting my optical ports multiple times. How do I marry that data back to an SDF uh, file that was only had electrical die tested once? Those are some of the challenges we're basically seeing um, when we go off and try to combine this data, number one. Secondly, it's the analysis itself, right? Mm -hmm. When you go off and do electrical test over here, you may be doing parallel testing, right? So you may be saying, hey, I'm testing uh, three die at a time, but now that you've got core package parts, when you have optical ports over here, I mean, these a different color. Let's assume on my device, I have, let's say two or three optical ports. He, he cannot go off and do parallel testing because it takes a huge amount of time and accuracy on being able to optically align uh, these ports to the actual test instruments that are gonna shine the light through these ports you know, transmit and then measure. So, hey, gone are the days where you can go off and quickly go off and say, hey, I'm doing multi-die testing. Now you're testing, you know, one die at a time. In this example over here, I'm testing this die with three ports and I move over to the next die, test the uh, next die with three ports. That's part of the complexity that we're seeing also, okay? Now, talking about signatures, your typical electrical test that you do, you want to see your Gaussian behavior in your data. And, you know, in a previous talk, had, we've talked about how Eorex at least goes off and detects non-Gaussian behavior and signatures as well. But for your light over here, because you're transmitting data on different biases and different uh, wavelengths, your, your signatures are going to be multimodal, right? So now we're basically looking at multimodal uh, data signatures and comparing them with, you know, Gaussian signatures to figure out, hey, what is a good die? So those are just some examples. I'm being very, very basic here. The challenges that we're trying to go off and address. Does this require more than one test insertion? Is it just a, the standard test place that you would do this, which is typically after it's manufactured and now you're testing a chip? Or are you now working as you start putting this thing together? It does involve multiple insertions. Uh, great segue, right? So if I use the same slide over here, I know we're basically overusing this slide, but typically you would do your you know, electrical test, you know, insertion, then maybe you're gonna go off and do your, your bump. Um, and then over here, you may be doing a multiple uh, optical inspection uh, tests as well. Right, so now uh, the complexity even becomes further because now you're going to go off and merge, right? Possibly four, possibly five, up to six, or maybe even more uh, test the test insertion points, and then generate that composite map to say, hey, um, this is only a good die if it was electrically good, if it had a good bump on it. Uh, if it was visually inspected to be good. And then all of the tests that we do that are basically purely optical tests, and those are all good tests as well. Then only then is it a good die to go off and assemble in a package. How do you integrate all this data? Is this something that's done with AI or is this something that you have to do sort of manually as you go, go forward? So what we're seeing is a lot of companies struggling to do this manually, right? Eurex, you know, does have a solution for this where we do it automatically. Um, but the other challenge is, hey, my electrical wafer was probed, let's say, as an example, notch down, correct? My optical wafer was tested with a notch left position or the die that we optically would test. So it's not just a case of simple merging. It's like, hey, the idiosyncrasy is about what was the wafer rotation? What was the offset with news? You know, how accurate is this? Well, theoretically, this is supposed to be very, very accurate. But how accurate are we basically getting to the uh, sub-device coordinates? But more so, when I want to go off and now, if I have sub-device and I want to go off and merge defect data, let's say I have a die and it has physical defects on it, and one of those physical defects just so happens to land on an actual port, optical port, right? Um, hey, there's going to be, maybe there's light coming out of it. Maybe there's no light coming out of it, or maybe the light coming out of it is not of the same intensity as other ports because there was a physical and there was a physical defect sitting on that top of that port. Now we get into like sub die, 
device uh, coordinates of defects and how accurate that is on the different equipment all play a part in how we're able to analyze the data and like you said hey it could be either done by humans or we have to then start using ai uh, to build these models which are by the way are not readily available as well to be able to do the analysis at level of depth and, and be accurate as well that accuracy is really interesting because what is considered accurate in electrical may be different than what's considered accurate in photonics, Optics, right? Yeah, but yes. Yeah. It's a valid point that the level of accuracy now uh, it, you know, brings on another level, another dimension. Like I said, because of physical defects and because of the marrying of the electrical data together with the optical data. Uh, to say, you know, these data sets go together and then it can be then used for analysis. But then part of that is like, you know, hey, which of the electrical characteristics are causing an adverse behavior on the optical uh, part of the product? Uh, those are all elements that, you know, industry, I guess, has to face challenge and resolve for. And yeah, it's done humanly today with tools like Healworks, of course. But as the number of optical devices and the complexity of these optical devices grow and the types of environments and the types of testing that have to be done on these devices grow, all resulting in huge volumes of data, and the complexity is going to grow as well. You've also got physical pressure coming in from the pro cards as well, right? What sort of impact does that potentially have on the optical side? I think if the actual design of the, um, of the product is where, you know, you always probing contact points on the edge of the die and your optical ports are contained squarely within the actual center of the die, let's say. Uh, I'm not sure if that causes issues. It's a fair point. You can always have like probe cards touching down, generating some kind of contamination, scratching, or causing some particles that are, again can adversely affect uh, the optical ports. Fair point. I'm not an expert per se, but I would say there is some kind of relationship between, hey, this die over here didn't test good because I had a probe card issue. Uh, great question. So you've been working in this space. What sort of problems are you starting to see and how are you dealing with them? Right. So the types of problems Ed, that we're seeing is going back to the amount of data, the number of insertions, the, the non-standards, right? For example, SDF or whatever other uh, standards existed before weren't really defined to capture uh, data for photonics-like devices. So the challenges there are really, okay, what is the data? How should we be capturing it? How should we be identifying it? How should we be merging that data? This is an area that Yieldworks is, you know, closely working with photonics companies. Hopefully out of this comes some standards that we can actually then take to equipment manufacturers and uh, the test instrument manufacturers as well to say, hey, can you adopt or ad at least adhere to some of these standards to make the life easy for customers and also make the life easy for customers like, you know, companies like Yieldworks that can then, you know, use those standards to develop better data analysis routines. So looking forward, this is something that everybody's going to have to know, right? Because photonics really is coming in as a, once we get down to uh, three nanometers, two nanometers, you have no choice. You have to do something to dissipate heat. You have to do something to lower the heat. You have to reduce the power. Mm -hmm. Correct. I mean, as... AI is taking off, as uh, GPUs are taking off, uh, as quantum compute is taking off, all of these solutions are going to use photonics like structures or photonics like devices. So this is not a this isn't like a one-time deal where hey, hey the problem is here and it's gonna go away. This is here to stay. Aftkar Aslam, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.